Good afternoon. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Hello, Guyan. How are you? Mm. Having a wonderful turmeric tea, ginger tea, on this day that it's early in the morning, it's cold, and then it gets warm. Well, allow me to start today. Hi, Becky. How are you? It's so good to have all of you because thank you for all the messages, the, the calls, and the emails. Uh, contacting me to make sure that I am safe, I am doing good. Well, um, I am. I've been IMA for a few days because I was moving. I was moving from my condo, being there for 30 years, into going back, living with my parents. I know for some it's like, why would you do that? And I decided to do something like this. It's been coming. After my father's death, um, it's been tough for mom. And uh, it took a year and a half for me to make that decision. So that's what I was busy doing. I hope you are safe. I hope you are doing well. And um, it's devastating what is happening here in our city, uh, our county, and our neighboring counties. With the fires going on in Los Angeles, my heart has breaking. I have called all my friends, offered them to stay at my place, at my condo, uh, especially those who were taken by surprise. I've got friends that were evacuated, family members who were evacuated. So I hope that you and your family members are doing well. And uh, it's, it's heartbreaking in a way. But at the same time, when we look at the bigger picture in life, what is important to us? What is? It's humanity. Those who have come together, right? Helping one another. Those who didn't even know one another coming to help another. And so it's time like this that we get to really understand what is the most precious thing. Um, I don't know how you are doing, how you've been coping with this devastation, because it's like from the moment you wake up, it's there, it is reality, it's in the news, it's on TV, it's on Facebook. Those are hard times. I know one of the gentlemen that they were interviewing, it, it was the hardest thing I was bawling about it because he was saying he was one of the members, family members of one of the boys who was shot at the bar and grill. And then two days later, they were supposed to evacuate and they haven't had time to grieve. And we all go through this. Anything that in life happens and it's such devastation or shock, shock of loss, a shock of loss of a home, uh, everything you have built for, shock of a loss of a relationship. It, it's all when it impacts one person, it's a rippling effect that it impacts so many. And I think it's the same when one person is going to go to surgery, they're going through pain and they're either having chemotherapy or having surgery. Everyone in their family comes together and they all feel and worry and have concerns 
for the wellness of this one person and prayers that are coming together for that one person's healing. And the same comes when, I think, if you have broken up a relationship, if you have gone through any kind of a, a breakup, either home, divorce, it, it's not one person. It affects the secular family, the children, the in-laws, the, the best friends separate, they take sides. And there's ones who come together for the benefit and bringing them together. So, yes, with all that is happening around us, it's just like, ah, oh, it's, why is it that it always happens near the holidays? I guess it's the weather and everything, but it just seems... Don't you feel it that it's always coming near the holidays, this kind of a devastation? It's unfortunate that I thought about it and it was like two years ago. It was all the floodings near Christmas and holidays. And But at the same time, stronger prayers come together. Stronger humanity, the bond that we all come together to help one another. So here's my question to you. When something breaks, when you are in pain, when there is th this kind of a devastation, what do you feel? How is it impacting you? Do you, do you cry? Do you resonate with it? Do you do you pack up and want to move somewhere else that it's like enough is enough? Or do you open your heart and say, how can I help you? What else can I do to help another person? So that is today's Heal Talk Tuesday. What is it that we feel and how is it that it connects to our feelings in mind in body and emotion just a few moments ago i had a client who booked a session hello raul hello milad i booked a session because she called me and said i am in a relationship that it's codependency and i would like help with codependency because that person is narcissistic and no matter what happens i keep going back and forth and I don't know why, because there's incredible parts of him that I love, the success, the nurturing, this. And my question to her was, it's not always about another person, but it's finding out more of who you are. What about you do you see in him or what about you has the need that, to attract this kind of attention and what is about the attention that you like and the other parts that you don't like so i asked her a few questions and she was like wow i never thought of it so during times that we sit back to observe about ourselves about how we react it's our reactions to things that are more important than how things happen to us. And I've always said, things do not happen to us, but happen for us. And yes, you're going to say, this devastation, did it really happen for me? Not in a direct sense. No, things that are negative it's not about they are for us but let me give you an example have you ever thought of when it comes to a breakup when it comes to a fight when it comes to a divorce when it comes to a pain even at the simplest pain in your body it's excruciating it's really bad i mean from earache to toothache 
to cutting your finger, to having surgery, right? It's still excruciating pain. But if that pain was not there, it would never wake you up to pay attention to your body for you to go and find out what is the cause. If, if one person just like this client who says all the things he does, there is so many good things, but there are so many things that this person has done that it's really hurtful from cheating, from his extravagant whatever, right? So those times she leaves. But it's this fight and flight, and then there's this freeze point. But why do we come back and think that this is going to be fixed until we get to know what about us? attracts and keeps coming back what is it that we need to fulfill about this part of us that we still come back to learn more about us it's another pain it keeps painting until we figure out either i want this pain or i no longer enjoy this and i no longer want it so i'm going to fix it and heal it and then move forward in life, either stay with this person knowingly or bye-bye. It's like having a tumor. Do we hold on to that tumor because it feels good? Or we say, if I touch it, it's going to be worse. Or I go find out how I can remove this. So here's my question to you. Sometimes we hold on to things, belongings, people, pain, mugs, because we give it emotional connection. But the most important thing in life, I believe, is, as Yogananda said, it's about life and love, right? And I'm going to find this quote uh, about it's not so much living, loving to live, but living to love. And the quote is so much more profound and I'm going to find it and I will put it in here. But it's all about love. The same thing as I'm talking about humanity coming together. It's how to also cope with the panic and anxiety. So it makes us sit back and appreciate, truly appreciate and look around. Is this important? Yes, for emergency call. Is this important? What is truly important in my life? Because in a split second, all that can be gone. In a split second, anything can happen. And when we plan, 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 and we hold on to hoard it, instead of letting it go and open your heart, open your, expand your mind and let things be free and allow, just allowing and I think that is the most beautiful thing, allowing love, allowing light. Um, a friend of mine, they just built their house. And they just finished after three years of building in Malibu. That they went, half the house is not there. Yes, it's devastating. But to her, it was... We are safe. My kids are safe. And just like that interview that they did, and this one guy turned around and said, it's okay. We can build. Another guy 
that jumped in the creek with his dog, looking all around, seeing all that happening, and yet held on to dear life with his dog. And you might turn around and say, why with his dog? Because maybe at that very moment, that was the most precious thing in his life. Maybe the dog saved him. So, when panic and anxiety strike, the first thing we must do is take a, a it's like, what's happening in my body? What's happening around me? What can I control? What can I do right here, right now that I have full control over instead of panicking and screaming and crying and going through that if I cannot help myself? If that guy could not help himself, he could never rescue his dog. And that that's that's what every essence of preciousness of life is and who are we to say one is right one is wrong it's the most unfortunate i remember it was a few years ago my parents their house is also at a brush fire and uh, they had the fire uh, engines in front of their house because fire was all around their house and they were ready to evacuate. So as we were watching all this last night, sitting there, I asked my mom and I said, do, you, do we have an emergency plan in place? And it's always good to have an emergency plan inside your body knowing that in case of emergency, in case of panic, in case of anxiety, what's one word you can say that triggers and brings you to full alertness, right? And that's one of the things that I also teach. And what's an emergency kit? Where is it? To be aware, to know, not only for all the people in the house, but family members, in case anything happens, where can we find each other? What if the cell phone is not working? Which, in most places, during this kind of a place, the cell phone may not work. And I now remember uh, years ago when the, I was talking to one of the police officers and they said, always, always have a landline connected in working condition in your house because cell phones are not as reliable. So mom and I, put a plan together, where is that emergency kit, in case of emergency, what would happen, where we would go, and how to connect with our family members to find one another. I think it's an incredible idea because not everyone is on Facebook. For two days, I really didn't know you might find this interesting, not interesting, but, um, say how is it possible we did not know not two days all day all day saturday i was busy packing moving so from seven o'clock in the morning until 10 30 at night i had absolutely no facebook no phone i didn't open my phone i didn't go on online i didn't tweet of course there i didn't do any of that because i was so immersed in my thing and that's what happens for some it does so many people focus only on one thing and I like to say that it's like zoning in it's that trance state we become so focused to one thing we forget about everything else and we are numb to so many other things and that's why I bring the example that things that happen, they're not happening to everyone. We feel bad for another person, but sometimes we cannot feel it and resonate with it. 
because we have not gone through it. Now, what is called, what is that? I think it's called loss. Loss of a loved one, loss of a pet, loss of a parent, loss of a child. So, and we can't blame others. We cannot blame people who have not walked the same shoes, the same path. And there are people who truly numb themselves so they don't feel it. It's too much. It's too much pain for some to endure. And especially those are who are sensitive and they take it in and it affects them more. So some say burn it so you can start all over and it's a clean slate being laid off. It's devastating and yet it's an opportunity to find another job. It's bad and I'm not talking about this. I'm just talking when panic strikes within yourself and there's people who numb themselves not to feel and there are those who go out of control so if you feel yourself out of control and anxiety at that very moment there is one thing you can do first and foremost you have to awaken your body by also commanding your body to go into full alertness. And you can even do two things. I'm okay, real loud and fast, and it's just, I'm okay, I'm okay. It's as if shaking yourself without shaking, saying, I'm okay. The second thing is, I am safe, I am safe. And when you come to someone that you want to help, it's like, say the same things. You're okay. You are safe. I am here. We'll be okay. Being okay, being safe is such powerful words. They are words that we have learned, and it's about our core safety. And the next thing is, once that happens, put your hand on them either on their shoulder on their hand on their thigh or knee to safeguard them grounding them it's as if this grounding it's like we're okay we're safe you will we'll be fine and just breathe breathe with me breathe with me breathe with me one two three and by calming that not only your body your nervous system but also another person who is going into a panic and anxiety you bring them they may want that but you bring them again just the way i am looking at you straight in face in eye to eye locking and holding we're okay we're safe we'll be fine we are safe you are safe I am safe and we hold on breathe with me breathe with me this thing can take only two minutes and in this two minute what you have done is safeguard yourself and someone going into into that realm of negative thinking into a down world spiral and instead of going up or down it doesn't matter it's called hold we hold safe it's incredible that by doing this another person's soul eye to eye contact is releasing sharing giving love 
It's about, I am here with you. You are as important on this earth as I am. And I am holding you safe as I am holding myself safe. And at that very moment, no matter what happens, it's called, we're in this together. We're in this together, the two of us. We're in this together, the three of us. We are in this together, the whole of us. And it can be as many of you. And by doing this, you safeguard yourself until help arrives. Until you have called your help. Until you have found, calmed yourself enough to seek help in a safer way. And that is today's message. Today's message is with no matter what happens out there, is sending love and prayer, is sending love and connection and grounding oneself with another and knowing that this place we call home, this place we call life, until the time that you don't feel safe enough, you cannot help someone else. So we go into this reactive mode and it comes to us just like that. And there's times that we forget all about ourselves and we run into point of fire to help someone else. And I hope we do this with training. If not, we are putting other people in jeopardy. So, hello, Tatevik. Hi, Jassy. It's incredible that uh, it takes a devastation like this that people say, um, no matter what happens, we're still family, we come together. So let us not wait until something devastating happens for us to reach out to someone we care, someone we love. That the last word is not anger. That the last word we spoke with someone was not of resentment. Because it comes back to feeling guilty, feeling bad, and it becomes self-punishment. So for today, we're going to to end this by saying, may all who have gone through this devastation, who are no longer with us, God bless them. God bless their soul. May the universal light protect them and may they be in the arms of whoever they believe to be. Um, and for those who are suffering for your loss, if it is monetary, it will come back. Difficult, but it will come back. You will build again. You will stand up again. Believe in yourself and ask for help. And for those of you who are here present, going through your own pain, emotional, physical, and or mental, understand that I am here for you. I am here for you. I am back. I am back to earth. I am connected again. And just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy. For the next three days, I am opening my door and give me a call, email me, I'm doing um, certain, just reducing my costs almost to nothing to help all those going through panic, trauma, and anxiety. 
And if it's a part of you, someone you know, by all means, give me a call. I'm here to help. Actually, today, this week, I'm offering my services for two hours of free on Friday. Anyone who wants to call me Friday morning between 9 and 11 in the morning, I am here um, for half an hour sessions. Uh, I am opening my door to you for half an hour. I am here to help you, guide you, give you tools, techniques to release panic and anxiety. This Friday from 9 a.m. until 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, by all means, um, until we meet again next week, be safe, breathe through it, count to three, and know that the light of universe is upon you, and God bless you. Um, hope to see you again. See you next week. Until then, bye-bye.